Hello my darlings, it's Zui here and today I'm delivering the first Genshin Impact story. I wrote this one myself and this one has best boy Razor in it. I love Razor and I'm so glad I pulled him. Uh, the background footage is me playing Genshin Impact, so I hope you enjoy that. And uh, before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell icon if you're new here. Watch the video until the end, share it around, disliking works as well, just do your thing, please. This is the best way how you can support me more indirectly, and if you would like to support me more directly, my Patreon and merch store are both down in the description. Now, please, enjoy the show, and next time I do Genshin Impact, I'm probably gonna do Deluke, because people requested Deluke. Enjoy. You are lost and exhausted. You had been hunting a wild boar for a few hours now. By now, even haven't given it a name, just to curse your emotions at something. The problem was that the boar had run off into the deeper parts of Wolvendom. The forest was barely explored by inexperienced hunters like you. Too dangerous. But you were too focused on your prey to even notice how deep you had gotten. Your stomach ached, and you haven't eaten anything yet. Too anxious to eat anything after all. This was your first serious hunt. It was rare for children of Mondstadt to want to leave the city walls. Thanks to your parents, however, you could afford training with the knights as an honorary student. You were good, but not good enough. Not only that, you actually never shot anything alive. So when the opportunity came to go hunting, you took it. Slowly you crept through the dark bushes of the forest. Sure, you were lost. But if you could at least get this boar, you wouldn't starve. Your heart pounded. And through the branches, you finally saw your future meal. The mouth-watering prey was nervously looking around itself. Slowly, you aligned your shot, already thinking of the delicious pork chops. And then you let go of the string. The arrow left the bow, but you heard a whine, and not that one of a boar. Oh no! You exclaimed as you jumped out of your hiding spot. The moment you shot your arrow, a wolf jumped at the boar. While you quickly approached the hurt animal, the pig itself was running away into the opposite direction. There goes your dinner. However, you had bigger problems on your hands. The wolves of Wolvendom were smarter than regular animals. They were always thinking, watching. And you simply couldn't risk upsetting them. You needed to fix this. Or that was it with your forest adventures. You knelt down next to the whining animal. It looked at you. Hey, 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 calm down, calm down, you said nervously while trying to sound as gentle as possible. Your hands went through its soft fur. He must have been a straggler. At least his pack wasn't around. I can help you, you mumbled to him heart beating out of your chest when your hands wrapped around the arrow sticking out of the wolf's shoulder. This will hurt. A lot. You warned it before pulling out the projectile. The animal howled loudly in pain and was about to jump at you when you gently pressed a hand on its neck. Shh, I can fix this. I can fix this. Tears started streaming down your face. The wound was bleeding heavily. Desperately trying to think straight, 
you reach into your pocket, quickly fiddling for your vision. Now you knew why pretty much everyone was having them on their person at all times. With a sigh of relief, you finally pulled out the blue stone. Of course, you were nowhere near the ability of the Deaconess Barbara, but this needed to suffice. A water bubble appeared around your right hand, and with it you softly pressed on the wolf's wound. The water turned red, and the wolf cried louder. Please work, please work, please work! You repeated in your head. You were so focused on healing the animal, you didn't even notice the footsteps quickly approaching you from behind. When suddenly, the wolf's body shivered, and it attempted to stand. With an unsure expression, you retreated your hand. The wound was gone. Only a small hole in his fur was an indication that there had been a wound. He sighed in relief, and the wolf wagged his tail. <sighs> I'm sorry, you blushed. I'm not that experienced. The cracking of a branch made you turn around with a shriek. A boy with crimson red eyes and white hair stared down at you. A large claymore on his back. You shrieked and fell backwards, almost landing on the animal. Who, who are you? You heard wolf. What? You heard wolf. The boy accused you again. You bit your lower lip. I mean, yeah, but I, I fixed it. You felt the wolf move behind you, stepping forward in front of you. The boy tilted his head, and the animal barked, his ears standing up. Right. Was he protecting you? You look back to the boy. Fine, he said before the creature waggled his tail. He looked at you one more time before running off into the undergrowth, quickly leaving your side. Finally, you got on your feet. Who are you? You asked. I should ask you same. You twiddled with your thumbs awkwardly. <sighs> My name is Razor. Was raised by wolves. Now I protect them. After telling me your name, he seemingly relaxed. It's rare other humans fix their mistakes. Usually just take. The honest answer would be being afraid of consequences, but you had a feeling that would upset him. So he said the first thing that came to mind. I was hunting a boar, not a wolf, and when I hit it, I felt guilty. I just wanted to do the right thing. Razor took a step closer to you, his face coming really close to yours as he sniffed the air. You were about to shove him away when he stepped back. You smell trustworthy, he said, and you blushed. How does someone smell trustworthy? You asked. And the boy crossed his arms. Can't explain. So it was a wolf thing. Instinct, maybe. Have watched you ever since you come into Wolvendom. You lost? He asked. Of course he was watching you. Well, yes, actually. You said with an embarrassed tone. You from city? Mondstadt? He asked, and you nodded. I can lead you home if you want. You scratched the back of your head. Well, to be honest, I kind of want to find the way back myself, but before I starve to death, you whimpered. Yes, please. Razor took your hand gently before guiding you into the opposite direction you personally would have gone to. You two were silent throughout. 
but you wanted to strike up a conversation. You had so many questions. The sun had already begun to set when you finally reached the outer border of Wolvendom's forest atop a cliff. In the distance, you could see Mondstadt. The setting sun colored the lake around the city in a beautiful orange. If you had a wing glider, you probably could reach Mondstadt from here. Razor, I can't believe how much I want to thank you. You looked at the boy next to you and he smiled. Next time need guide for Wolvendom, just ask me. You walked over to the cliff's edge and sat down, inviting him in the process. The view was amazing. And a small breeze began to pick up now. It brought over the smell of flowers from the surrounding area. Razor looked down at his dangling feet. Do you like Hunt? He asked. You smiled awkwardly. Well, this is my first hunt and about everything went wrong. Um, I'm not sure if I'm cut out for this. The boy tilted his head. If Wolf wouldn't have jumped, the shot would have killed the boar. He looked back at the lake. You sure, or are you just saying that to cheer me up? Both. Your face turned soft. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. I like hunt, he said. Whenever I'm hungry, I hunt. He was living in the woods, so he didn't have much of a choice. You grinned. <laughs> I guess this means you don't like greens, huh? His eyes widened. How did you? You giggled. <laughs> well, if you always hunt, you always eat meat. This either leads me to believe you never tried veggies, or you really hate them. You blushed. Uh, sorry for trying to analyze you. He chuckled, but didn't answer. Quietly, you two watched until the sun was gone and the stars began to twinkle in the sky. A howl echoed from the forest. My pack must go. He was about to jump on his feet when you asked, Will I ever see you again? He turned towards you. Call for me next time in Wolvendom. Why not? Come with me to Mondstadt. Not now, of course, but... I, I mean, whenever you need someone to talk to. You looked at the ground and thought. I don't like city. Too many smells. Too loud. Then he looked at you again. His crimson eyes sparkled in the night sky. Fine. Welcome to Mondstadt. He smiled gently. You two went on your feet, and before he ran off, you grabbed his arm. Uh, what? He asked, confused. I just wanted to thank you properly, you said nervously. You went closer to his face and softly kissed him on the cheek. When you pulled back, his face was red like a tomato and his fingers were twitching. <laughs> Did you just break him? Another howl came from the forest, bringing him back to reality. See you soon, he said before running off. You were left there standing. Eventually you sighed and started walking around the lake. The magic of your encounter held until you reached Mondstadt's bridge. And then, all you felt was hunger and exhaustion. <laughs>